Let's have a low-key, rational conversation with Paul Bissonnette joining us. Uh, Biz Nasty, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. I thought you guys were going to call me on to talk about skill plays, maybe Connor McDavid's goals, and then I see the tweet that you're, you just want to talk about the Battle of Alberta. We just well, want to stir up, on. No, we're stir up to, vitriol is all we want we're to gonna do. Get to the, we're going to get to Morgan Riley and what he means to the Leafs defense. I think we are. We're going to get to that. I mentioned that earlier. And let, let me going, off the hook. And all right? what the hell's going on in New Jersey? All right, Biz. I, I wouldn't mind bringing up New Jersey. We beat the Capitals and a 10-game winning streak for the for the Lightning in one weekend and fire Ray Let him trade Taylor Hall, then fire him? That's a great point. All right, we're defending ourselves way too much, which means All we're right. guilty. So, uh, <laughs> Paul, my theory is if you give Cassian two games before the next Calgary game, costing him two game checks, he is less likely <laughs> to go in there like a, like a Spanish bull in a ring going after any member of the Calgary Flames. My co-host, Tim McAuliffe, him and I disagree on plenty. He thinks it will have the complete opposite effect. It will add more adrenaline to the Cassian bloodstream, and he will go into that game looking for blood. What will be the impact of a potential two-game suspension for Zach Cassian? I mean, I know I'd be upset if I was losing money, so it might tick me off even more. So I'd have to lean towards that option. But, uh, I mean, based on on – all the things that are even happening now, my mind has exploded in the last 12 hours with with all the the sound bites that are coming in. For me, I, I love the f- fact that a regular hockey season game has this much passion in it in today's NHL. Um, if I could back up to the to the first hit that Kachuk laid on Cassian, I actually thought that was way dirtier than the second. Agreed. If I'm in Cassian's shoes after that first hit, where if you're looking at Calgary's goalie to the left side, I I mean, he came down off his check in order to make that hit. So this is, you're going to see the first one. To me, that's far dirtier than the second one. The fact that Cassian didn't hit the eject button on his gloves right there tells me he doesn't deserve to get any games. It's this one again right here, so a very similar hit. Now, listen, I would argue that, like, if if you put yourself in, in, let's say Cassian does that to Monaghan, Calgary Flames fans are losing their minds, right? But because it's Cassian, maybe there's not as much sympathy involved. Um, regarding Cassian getting suspended, I I like the old school stuff, and I like when guys are policing the game themselves. I feel like Cassian wasn't protected by the official on the first one. I thought that was a missed call. Am I saying that Kachuk should have been suspended for that hit? No, but that should have been penalized. Would you guys agree with that? I agree yeah. with it. Yeah, I you, agree with it. You agree with it now? Because you were saying both were clean, or at least according to George Peros earlier. Well, the more the more I look at the first one, though, there, it's not it's not um, perfect. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, but specifically. Took his head off. No, but honestly, like <laughs> Tim, Tim's on me about not changing my mind at times, and it's tough because I'm right 99% of the time. <laughs> but when I see that first hit over and over, uh, Biz and McAuliffe, I'm kind of I'm with you. It's 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 not the best looking hit. But again, George Peros looked at it, and and Paul, the one thing I can't understand is if 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 people like myself who didn't play in the National Hockey League aren't allowed an opinion, and we don't know what we're talking about, and that was a dirty hit. How come George Peros also didn't really have a problem with the hit? Uh, listen, I'm not I'm not gonna like die on any hill. I'm saying right. personally from watching that first one with what's been being called in the last few years. I mean, look, he kind of launches up. I would say that he does make contact to his shoulder first, but he I don't think he was also he wasn't making a play on the puck, right? And if if that's where we're trying to head the game, I would say that's that's crossing the line. Now, once again, I'm not going to die on the hill whether he should have been suspended or not, but I'm okay with the fact that he did it again when Cassian's wires cross. I'm okay with him policing himself yeah. at that point, saying, okay, official, you're not going to protect me. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. So that's where I'm at. I also have a very old-school mentality. Um, regarding the entire situation, I don't have skin in the game, but I think that this is incredible. The next two games, I think they're playing on the 29th and the 1st in a back-to-back of the Battle of Alberta. All eyes are going to be on that hockey very similar to the situation that happened with the L.A. Kings in Calgary. It just seems like the Flames are in the center of the hockey universe right now when it comes to uh, on our, on ice controversy. Uh, just to clarify the schedule part of that, Biz, um, next up for the Oil tomorrow night against Nashville, 18th against Arizona, all-star break happens. The next Calgary game is Wednesday, January 29th. Then there's right. a Blues game on the Friday. 
Okay. And then there's the Saturday, February 1st, before the Super Bowl game back in Calgary. So it's not technically a back-to-back, but it's damn close. And he's mentioning it because they're all on okay. Sportsnet. There you go. Yeah, I just, I just saw the back to play. Yeah. Oh, okay. Quick shout out to yourselves. Yeah. yeah. yeah Five billion back. says that we can pat ourselves in the back. <laughs> yeah. Five billion. But, uh, I mean, I think everyone's going to be dialed into those games. And, and, you know, I like where the game's headed because it's so much more fast and skilled. And we're seeing these crazy goals and we're being entertained in that fashion. I just like, I do like a little bit of hatred. I like that passion, especially come regular season time. And, I mean, Calgary and Edmonton, those are two teams that have some bruisers, whether they're on the blue line or up front. And as we've seen in the past couple of years, I mean, we saw Washington and um, Vegas go to the finals together. We saw another couple teams who I would consider bullies in St. Louis and Boston meeting in the final last year. So, I mean, short history tells me, and even going back to when L.A. won a few. So, you still need to play tough hockey nowadays, guys. And I know that the game is headed in a certain direction, but when it comes playoff time, you need that uh, that jam in the lineup. And that's why I always comment about the Leafs maybe picking someone up at the deadline. And I'm not saying just a, a one-dimensional goon. I'm saying somebody with a little bit of sandpaper, um, you know, a, a, maybe a Wayne Simmons type who's on a one-year deal in New Jersey, whether that works with with Toronto salary cap or not. But I feel that teams need to add a little bit of jam going into the postseason. Paul Bissonnette joining us here on Tim and Sid. I, I I feel like when I'm talking about the the code and honor in the game, I feel like we're, we're losing track of that. And a lot of the new school folks look at it as it's Neanderthal hockey. But whenever I'm describing it, I feel like I'm Jack Nicholson and a f- few good men yelling, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Because what happens when Cassian has to police himself – I believe, is the next time they play, guys like the code isn't there for guys who can protect themselves like Cassian. It's guys on the ice who shouldn't have to protect themselves. That's who the code was meant to protect. And guys like Gaudreau and Lindholm and McDavid will now be opened up to this. Am I wrong on that? And do you believe enough of the folks that are yelling and screaming, ah, you should be able to take a hit without having to fight, aren't thinking about those guys being opened up to that game. Oh, I, holy jeezy. That's a lot to digest right there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I like the game policing itself. And, and, and I found that, you know, probably 10 years ago, it was just a lot different. Like, even as a fighter myself, I knew not to go after those guys. There were guys that, that didn't care and and who were rats i mean you got to look at the matt cooks and i mean maybe even you know even not too long ago the marshaws but I, I, like i said earlier i'm a little bit more old school and i like that that mindset and, and i don't mind those guys being protected by the game policing itself wow. now i i also i'm also with other okay with other people thinking the opposite way i, I mean everyone's entitled to their own opinion whether you played the game or not i would argue though that the people who are, are kind of going at Cassian about it, those people have no idea the chemical imbalance that's going through someone's body when they feel, <laughs> felt that they've been cheap shot. Well, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. th- that's personally happened to me, and that's why after the first one, I was like, hey, he should be commended for his patience on not snapping after that one. And as I said, with the amount of pressure and tension between even the game itself – let alone the cheap shots and the Battle of Alberta and, and add all the, the the chaos when it ensues, it, it's just really hard to describe to people who haven't played at a high level of hockey the emotions that are going through his body at that particular time. Paul, I don't want to... I don't want to sit here and... and I lose it at men's league. Well, I feel like a well, loser but, after, but I'm losing it at stories. men's league. But I don't want to sit here and, and diagnose like a concussion because it's a very dangerous thing to do and I'm not qualified. But the way he reacted after the second hit and the way he reacted after the first hit, is there any, is there any possibility his bell was wrong after the first hit which prevented him from reacting in that way? Or is that just a dangerous speculation to make? I, I would agree. That's a That's a... Yeah, that's a pretty good theory on it. I've been I've had my bell rung numerous t- times like that. And what happened is 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 all of a sudden you see quick black and then and then you hear a bit of a ringing in your ears and then all of a sudden you're just trying to get your your bearings and figure out what just happened. It's like a car accident. 
So I would say that, yes, probably right after that, he was in such shock, and he's looking around to, to digest the situation, as you can see him look around right there. And finally, when he does, he goes over and says something. And, and, and on the second one, he didn't get him as hard, and I would imagine that he didn't have that feeling of going black and hearing right. that bell ringing and having to digest it. It was more like, okay, he did it again. Now I'm going to take matters in my own hands. Ding, ding, ding. And that's – even the linesmen, I think, let him get in a couple shots because, you know, they're not the ones who can blow the whistle in that situation. But I think that they, they felt that he needed a little bit of retribution in, in getting Kachuk back. Now, yeah. switching Second sides, linesman, for sure. Yeah. Second linesman okay. stood there and watched it. And, and going to, to Kachuk's side of things, he plays a certain way, and I would want both of these guys on my team. Yeah, I love that. the way that Kachuk plays. He is the He's taken over Marchand as the number one rat in the NHL, yeah. and that is non-negotiable based off what we've seen over the last maybe four months. And he baits casting into a penalty. They end up scoring the game winner on it. And this game in this league is about winning hockey games. And, and he did his job. I, I was actually surprised at Tippett's comments and the fact that he was he wished that Cassian would have taken a number there. I would have been more upset at the fact that there was no call in the first one, and that's why he decided to react on the second one. But, you know, there's there's also a lot of pressure to win in Edmonton, and things haven't necessarily been going as smoothly as they did at the yeah. start of the season. Yeah. And we I, I touched on it earlier with the way Cassian might have reacted the way he did. The amount of pressure that these people feel, especially being in Canadian markets, it it manipulates the mind. And I I played in Arizona, and I'm saying that. <laughs> uh, Paul Bisnasty, uh, Paul Bisnett, excuse me. It's like your real name is Bisnasty now, Paul. <laughs> forgive me. Uh, Paul Bisnett okay. here on Tim and Sid. Uh, before we let you go, we got about 30 seconds only. Uh, I said two games for Cassian. Tim McAuliffe said no games for anybody. Just let it go. Yeah. Will Cassian get games between now and whenever? Because we anticipate the suspension news might be coming down soon. George Peros has the hardest job right now based on the fact that he's got to deal with PC culture and you can't please anyone. I would hope, considering that he didn't penalize the first Kachuk hit, that Cassian shouldn't get a game. Now, if he gets one or maybe two, I won't be shocked. I, I, would, I would be okay with one. Okay. Uh, anything more than that, I think it's a bit Bush League and Cassian got the short end of the stick. And keep in mind, as I said, the only reason I'm saying all this, and if you're a Calgary Flames fan and you're, like, you're, you're upset at, at my comments, I could only imagine the reaction if Cassian would have hit Johnny Goudreau yeah. or Sean Monaghan like that. If you can tell me that you'd had the same reaction as the Cassian get hit by Kachuk like that, I could say, okay, you're not being a hypocrite. But I highly doubt that that's the case. You have to take the fan bias right out of it. Paul Bissonnette, great stuff as usual. Bisnasty, thank you very we much, sir. We didn't even get we to, didn't any, get of to any, any of the, any of the other stuff. Well, then come back soon, brother. Oh, I will, because Jeff won't stop harassing me. He's asking me to come on every other, every other day. Uh, uh, guess because we love you. That's because we yes. love you. Thanks, brother. I love you guys, too. You guys are killing it. Keep doing a good job. Thanks, Good man. to see you. There is uh, Biz Nasty Paul Bissonette.